wave reflection. Remember when you see the pause video indicator to do exactly that and take great notes. Waves propagate down a medium, but what happens when they reach a barrier? For example, what happens when a ripple on the surface of a pool hits the edge of a pool here? Well, what happens is you get a reflection. This type of a reflection is known as an open end reflection, meaning that uh, the wave is free to move up and down uh, the barrier and then be reflected back into the same medium from which it came. So again, the end of the uh, wave is free to um, adjust up and down. Again, that's like water waves uh, hitting the edge of a pool, or it's also like the uh, end of a, a loose rope that you've uh, shook, and then the energy will come back into the rope after the loose end has flopped back and forth. Another type of reflection is when the end of the medium is fixed and can't move up and down. And this is kind of like a guitar string, for example. When the uh, guitar string, the wave on the guitar string hits the end of the string, the end of the string is fixed, a fixed end, and the wave, notice, reflects back on the other side. It flips over 180 degrees and flips and turns and goes the other way after flipping over. This is also the way light is. When light hits a mirror and reflects, or a smooth surface and reflects, it phase shifts or flips 180 degrees. The movement travels down the spring, and when it reaches the other end, it bounces back. It's reflected. Notice that when the slinky wave is reflected from a fixed end, it reflects back on the opposite side. Here are some illustrations that uh, will help you put in your notes what we meant by a free end reflection when wave came and hit and it moved up and down and went back reflected on the same side versus a fixed end when it came in and reflected and went back on the opposite side or phase shift or phase shifted 180 degrees. So put this down in your notes. Waves often travel from one medium to another and uh, when they do they transition and if in this case like they're shown here with a darker versus a lighter medium when they go from a more dense medium to a less dense medium then we'll get some form of reflection where the transmitted wave continues on through and the reflected wave bounces back as if this were a free end reflection here because this is less dense than the wave coming in it acts like a free end and the pulse goes back on the same side here now we're going to use these wave machines to show the interaction at a boundary between two different wave machines one with short bars and one with long bars the short and long crossbar machines represent different wave propagation media. Here in slow motion, you can see that part of the wave is transmitted and part of it is reflected at the boundary. Here in slow motion, you can see that part of the wave is transmitted and part of it is reflected at the boundary. Here's a, um, an illustration that will help you take notes uh, showing the uh, interaction between two media when a pulse is coming down. So remember the more dense uh, media here, when it hit the boundary to the less dense media, the, this is called an incident pulse. Incident means incoming. And so when an incident pulse came and hit here, there was reflection. Since this was a less dense medium, it was an a free end type of reflection and the pulse went back on the same side in the more dense so the reflection the reflected pulse was in phase with how it was previously and there was also transmitted energy some of the energy went through um, at the uh, interaction here at the interface here so uh, put all this information in your notes 
Now, what happens when a wave is coming in from less dense medium and goes to a more dense medium? And uh, what will happen is that at the interface here, at the boundary, the, uh, this will act like a fixed um, point and the wave will reflect on the opposite side uh, and go back into the less dense medium and it'll phase shift 180 degrees, in other words flip over opposite to the way it was and some energy will be transmitted onward. This is what happens when light is coming in a window and you get reflection back uh, from the uh, window and then obviously light also goes through the glass and uh, window. So this is like light coming in, hitting the window, light reflecting back out into the air and some of the light going through the glass right here. So uh, that's what happens when you go from less dense to more dense. Here's an illustration that you can uh, copy over to your notes that shows what we just saw. Again, the less dense media uh, at the boundary here going into the more dense media, we get a reflection into the less dense media, which is 180 degrees phase reversed and uh, reflected as well as transmitted pulse. You can also put in your notes that uh, this is what you see when light hits a window and goes into the glass here from air. So far we've been looking just at uh, waves that are on slinkies or on uh, wave machines and are just in one dimension. Well, What happens when waves reflect in two or three dimensions? Well, this is a two-dimensional model. What we see here is if we have a barrier right down here and we have an incident wave train coming in here, these are the incident waves coming into the barrier here, they'll hit the barrier and they'll reflect away and uh, we reflect it out. Now the in interesting thing here is waves in two dimensions show the law of reflection. That is, whatever angle the waves come in, that's the same angle the waves go out. When we're talking about these angles here, we're talking about what's called the incident angle, theta i is our symbol, and that is the angle right here between the, the angle that the wave is coming in and what we call the normal line. So the normal is the line that we construct perpendicular to the barrier that's causing the reflection and we bring it down right at the intersection point where the reflection occurs. And so the incident angle is right here. And then we have a reflected angle which is referenced from the normal over to where the direction that the waves are reflected here. Um, if we have a light ray, we have a ray of, ray of light coming in hitting, then the ray of light will go out at an equal angle. So this really shows what happens to uh, waves in two dimensions and uh, make sure you take really careful notes of this particular part. And you can put an equal sign right here that theta i is equal to theta r. This next video uses a ripple tank where there's a thin layer of water and a uh, basically in a window pane and there's a wave generator that taps on the uh, water and creates plane waves that'll come in and hit that boundary right there in the ripple tank. The incident wave and the reflected wave make equal angles with respect to the normal. Again, the incident and reflected waves make equal angles with respect to the normal. If the angle of incidence is zero, then the angle of reflection is zero. If the angle of incidence is 35, then the angle of reflection is 35. If the angle of incidence is 45, then the angle of reflection is 45. If the angle of incidence is 55, then the angle of reflection is 55. Each portion of wave front obeys the law of reflection. So one more time, 
The law of reflection states that the incident angle relative to the reference to the normal line here, this theta i right here, is equal to the ref reflected angle right over here. That is that if this is an incident ray of light or an incident wave and it hits a barrier here or a, a mirror, it will be reflected at an equal angle but on the opposite side of the normal line which is perpendicular to the barrier or the uh, mirror or whatever is causing the, re the wave to reflect. So it doesn't matter what angle it comes in it's going to go out at an equal angle on the opposite side of the normal line here. So uh, this is the uh, overall illustration that should uh, show quite clearly the law of reflection. The last idea is that there are different surfaces that light reflects from. Uh, up until now we've been looking at what's known as specular uh, type reflections. We've been looking at reflections off of mirrors or reflections off of smooth surfaces like this, a smooth surface. And uh, we looked at the law of reflection. And for a smooth surface, if light rays are parallel or, or incident waves are parallel coming in, then they go out in nice parallel tracks going out. Um, and you get the law of reflection uh, for this plane surface. And again, that's called specular reflection. But as you and I know, most of our world is not shiny and mirror-y like this. Most of our world is opaque, like this wall up here, or this gray wall right here. Not like these uh, windows. Those are specular reflections we're seeing there. And this is specular reflection you're seeing on the lake. But the walls and the roofing material and even the blue sky here are like this surface where it's rough or irregular and uh, the rough or irregular surface means that rays of light coming in or waves coming in are going to hit and go off at various angles because you're going to be hitting surfaces that are of various texture and, and have normal lines. The normal lines are all going to be going off at different angles to these different surfaces. The law of reflection still works, but when all the normal lines are pointing all over different ways because the surface is irregular, then the light is going to be bouncing off at all kinds of different angles the way it's coming off. So sunlight coming in at a nice even angle is reflected off in many angles and we get opaque surfaces here. Most of our world, in fact, is what we would call diffuse reflection where the light reflected comes off in all kinds of different angles and it's not shiny like this because we're getting little pieces of light from all over the place that's getting to our eyes. Again, that's called diffuse reflection. It still obeys the law of reflection here, but nevertheless, uh, it gives us these uh, more opaque looking surfaces. So, I think that's enough for now. Time for Scratch's parting idea. Oops, you should uh, probably take notes on what specular reflection is and diffuse reflection here before we finalize things. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.